story, the Gauteng Forensic Investigation Report on allegations of corruption at driving license and testing stations was being released today. The provincial government appointed a consulting team to lead the investigation last year. It was to probe alleged conflict of interest by officials, bribery, and the manipulation of the booking systems. Well, let's discuss this further now. I'm joined in studio by the Gauteng Transport MEC, Jacob Mamabula. Mr. Mamabula, good afternoon. Welcome to today. Thank you very much for your time. I know you've had a very busy day. You've been up and about uh, launching this a little bit earlier. We've been reporting on it already. Are you satisfied that the forensic report investigation is giving you what you need to deal with accountability? Firstly, good afternoon to you, to all the viewers, and thanks for inviting us. Um, I must say that uh, we are deeply um, pleased with the report. It is very detailed, it's comprehensive, it provides information data that uh, helps us to turn around the services in the um, uh, DLTCs. And to that extent, we think we have got a very good uh, point of departure or baseline upon which to improve the service. So to that extent, we are satisfied with the report. Consequences, should we expect more out of this report in terms of people who might be found guilty? Well, uh, the consequential effect of this is um, there will be um, implications. I mean, uh, uh, and of course, we will speedily, without any hesitation, um, you know, put in place, I mean, take action against those officials that are implicated in wrongdoing or those that are found to have committed, um, you know, acts that requires that we, we take further steps. But also, we will take the report to law enforcement agencies because there are internal disciplinary processes on the one hand, but we also need to follow through with law enforcement. Yeah, you must be concerned, I mean, as the ABC, when you read, I, I, did, I haven't read the report, and you look at the kind of things that have been done, allegedly, including the, the, uh, the, the misuse of the online booking system, and, and also how motorists as well are behaving in, in this system. I mean, it's not just the officials, but motorists, us as motorists are also misbehaving. You must be concerned about the depth of this. Let me confirm that uh, we are deeply concerned, of course, about uh, what we are hearing in the report. But uh, on the positive side, we are better when we know the truth, when we know the facts. Even if um, the facts, um, you know, could point out to a difficulty, but um, it will help us pointedly to work in a particular direction, unlike flying in the dark, we now have the light. We know where to go to. So if you take our DLTCs and treat them as, um, you know, sealed black boxes where you can't see anything, this report brings light, transparency, openness, and we are able now to know uh, in which direction to go, what's happening. And to that extent, even the statistical data about what people are charging uh, and all that really, I must say, um, while, of course, yes, you are right, it is uh, deeply concerning, but on the other hand, the opportunity there is we have the facts. Are you confident that your internal disciplinary processes will yield the desired results in this kind of matter? You know, in anticipation of this report, we had to strengthen our labor relations capacity because um, we know that uh, from experience that matters of uh, disciplinary processes can be very complex. Uh, so to that extent, I'm quite sure, because this is a forensic uh, investigation report. Um, these matters have been tested, verified to a certain extent. So for internal disciplinary processes, we're confident that it should move us one step forward. Where it relates to criminal activity, there should be further investigations by our law enforcement agents. So on both fronts, I would like to say to the viewers that um, we have got a very solid basis uh, to move forward on disciplinary action. And you'll take your, the recommendations in this report to finality? The recommendations, if I were just to quickly go, uh, I mean, mention them. So disciplinary action, we will implement that. 
we have already started looking at, um, uh, as the report says, we must install CCTV cameras in inside, outside the whole, you know, perimeter of the DLTCs because the biggest worrying factor here is activities of what's called runners. These are the people that pretend to be helping members of the public that are coming for service, but they actually exploit and take advantage of their vulnerabilities. To that extent, we believe that um, together with law enforcement, our security services, if we bring more technology into the space, again, bring light, transparency, openness, and we can see what's happening. So we, as I was coming here, we were tightening up the issue of CCTV cameras. So the recommendations are important to us. Otherwise, it will be waste of money of the public if we don't implement. So, and some of them, I mean, today we were unveiling state of the art. We cut a ribbon, state of the art, beautiful facility on how train station in. Um, in Centurion. Yeah, I was that actually is, coming to that, that uh, you've got these new off-grid centers that you, you are launching. So the one that you've just launched today, is it going to be enabling you to prevent corruption, for example, and to uh, build efficiency into the system as you service the motorists? So what, um, where we started is that we, we looked at investigations, expanding our footprint but introducing a new generation of DLTCs. A pilot was done at the Houtrain um, uh, office in Midrand and we were satisfied with the pilot. Then we, 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 we went to look for alternative building material, state of the art, very beautiful, uh, off the grid and we launched one at the Houtrain station in Midrand. And we expand it now to, we expanded one today, we opened in Centurion. So one of the difficulties we have is that the Houghton population grows very fast, marginally per annum or at any time. The number of DLTCs remain constant and the same, making the service not enough in, uh, accessible to the people that breed corruption as well. So we want, we have now a model, state of the art, very beautiful, run efficiently. I spoke to people there. They said 10 out of 10, that's what we give the service. The comfort, the staff, the systems. So that is what we want to expand as a state of the art, uh, a best practice, a benchmark for um, the people of the province. And using, so, using new technologies. Using smart technologies. And remember, when there was a huge outcry about, I can't find a slot, we are trying to book. We leverage smart technologies. We introduced what's a campaign called Request a Slot, in which we did uh, the first of its kind service delivery app, Request a Slot app, and we introduced a new web-based system. We did two email addresses. Those combined gave us a solution. So I'm saying... We shouldn't look at the report as, you know, isolated one thing on its own. The report goes with expansion of our footprint. It goes with leveraging smart technologies. It goes with, um, of course, corruption taking action. So all these factors together. Uh, combined okay. are giving us a better improvement. Just to ask this question, I mean, we're, we've got load shedding now again from ESCOM. Your centers, these smart centers that you're investing so much money in, are you going to have a, a localized kind of power generation so they don't go offline? The DLTCs that we have with how train are off the grid completely. Uh, I didn't see any wiring linking to um, electricity supplied by ESCOM, I also asked myself, can you confirm this is completely off the grid? So confirmed, I can say to the viewers, load shedding does not affect us in the uh, in these new in centers, the in the new centers, yes, yes. yeah. Okay. So the issues of load shedding to us. Okay. I've got another uh, question. Not, yeah, before you, questions. before we, we conclude, MEC, I've got another question, Mr. Mawolo, for you because of the hat that you are wearing as MEC for transport. You are aware of the current Patco strike, the driver strike. I mean, the transport sector, and it's happening right here at New Canada in Soweto, the, here in Johannesburg, here in Gauteng. What are your thoughts about trade union NUMSA calling for government to stop subsidizing PATCO? What are your thoughts? Firstly, I think, um, the, let me just express this point that, um, you know, the sad part about the stakeholders in public transport is that um, we, still, we seem to be still very far from winning 
the new way of doing things, which is to negotiate and talk about the problems before they come worse. You can see with the tax industry, e-hailing, meter taxes, and now we have got a strike that is affecting commuters badly. So we would like to call on there. So there are contractual obligations with all the companies that uh, are on the subsidy. And uh, we will definitely have a responsibility in terms of the rule of law to respect um, the paper on which these agreements are written. And having said that, let me appeal to all public transport stakeholders, to the PATCO board and to the management as leaders, to the trade unions, to the workers, that um, you know, they will do far much better if they were to appreciate the strategic importance of the table to sit and negotiate and do nothing but negotiate and negotiate the challenges that they have. This is the culture that we are trying to embed into the public transport space. And to that extent, we are appealing to them. They are leaders on both sides. Let them appreciate the need to face each other on the table and discuss the issues. They will realize they are better around the table than chasing each other in courts, in the streets, and everywhere. We're calling for the parties to find a solution in the interest of the commuters. Uh, that's, that's, that's the appeal. One and, and just to paraphrase, before, as we conclude, before you go, you are saying that the matter of the subsidy is guided or governed by existing agreements, so there are contractual obligations. You can't just stop the subsidy. Um, you know, our country's constitution and the laws of this country are founded on a very important principle of the rule of law. So if we arbitrarily um, just you know, ignore or, or temper with the legal framework that I've even found. These contracts were signed in uh, 1998, if I'm not mistaken, around that time. The first administration led by Utah Nelson Mandela, that's when they were signed. So for anyone to arbitrarily completely disregarding the law um, will be it will, be, it, will, it will not be correct to disregard the law. Okay, Mr. Mabulo, thank you very much for your time here on today on ENCA. That's uh, Ndate Jacob Mamabulo. He is the Houting Transport MEC, sharing with us the outcomes and the recommendations of a forensic investigation into alleged corruption at the testing centers, the DLTCs of Houting, and also sharing the good news that there's a new uh, smart, high-tech, new-look, high-tech, uh, state-of-the-art uh, centers going forward.